Yo, 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 this is Mr. O. Yo, 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 this is Mr. O. And today we're going to learn all about bisector. So what's bisector? It's a, uh, could be a segment, line, uh, or ray that bisect, uh, could be, can bisect a segment, can bisect an angle. And today we're going to learn about perpendicular bisector theorem and ang uh, angle bisector theorem. Okay. So let's go ahead now. Uh, perpendicular bisector theorem, if a point lies on a perpendicular bisector, the meaning of perpendicular bisector, uh, it, uh, this bisector here makes 90 degree angle and it passes to the midpoint. And so therefore these two here are equal. Then it is equidistant from the endpoints of the segment. Meaning to say uh, any point along the uh, bisector, if you connect it to the end of the segment, they will be congruent. Even I, let's say I stretch this blue bisector here. If I connect this orange point to the end point of that segment, they will still be congruent. That's basically the perpendicular bisector theorem. So if CD is perpendicular to AB and AD is equal to BD, then we can say that AC is congruent to BC. So using the figure here originally, these two here are going to be congruent. Converse of that theorem, of the perpendicular bisector theorem, converse, remember, is the reverse of that one. So if we say that this segments, the side AC and BC are congruent, uh, then we can say that this is perpendicular, that measures 90 degree, and these two sides are going to be congruent. So if CA, if a point is equidistant from the endpoint of a segment, then it is on the perpendicular bisector of the segment, which in this case, if CA is equal to CB, then we can say that CD is perpendicular to AB. Likewise, that AD is congruent to BD. Okay, that's the converse of the perpendicular bisector theorem. All right, let's apply that one. Find the value of x. So I know that this measure is 90 and this two here are congruent. So I know that this blue segment here is the perpendicular bisector. So therefore I can say that this two here are equal. So I can say that seven x plus 24 will be equal to 13 x minus 48. Working out the algebra, I'm gonna subtract seven x here, subtract seven x here. Add 48 here, add 48 there. Cancel this, cancel that. That will give us 72 is equal to 6x. And what is 72? I want to say 12, but I want to double check. 72 divided by 6 is 12, right? Divided by 6 and 6. So therefore, 12 is equal to x. Kaboom. Next, find EG using this figure here. And I can see in this figure that this two sides here are congruent. And this are, this is, per, they're perpendicular to EF because they measure 90. So therefore, since this uh, are congruent, I can say that it's a perpendicular base sector. So therefore, EG is equal to FG. So 2X plus 11 is equal to 14x minus 37. Again, I just have to solve for the x value here by subtracting 2x here, subtract 2x there. And I'm going to add 37 here, add 37 there. That will cancel this and that. That will give me 48 is equal to 12x divided by 12 there, divided by 12. So therefore, x equal to 4. Kaboom. But common mistake, you don't settle just for x. The question here is find eg. Eg is right here. Eg is 2x plus 11. So therefore, 2 times 4 plus 11 
8 plus 11 is 19. So therefore, EG is equal to 19. Kaboom. These two sides are equal. And it cross a segment here that measures 9 degrees. So we can say that this is the perpendicular bisector. If there's a perpendicular bisector, we know that any point along the bisector that connects to the segment, the endpoints of the segment will be congruent, right? So therefore, we can say that 6x minus 26 is equal to 3x plus 34. So I'm going to subtract 3x here, subtract 3x here, and I'm going to add 26 here, add 26 there. That will cross out, that will cross out. This will give me 3x equal to 60 and divide by 3, divide by 3, x equal to 20. If x equal to 20, the question is what's jk? jk is right here, one of the uh, side that connects to the endpoint. So 6 times 20 minus 26 is 120 minus 26. That's going to be 94. Kaboom. Let's go now to angle bisector theorem. Angle bisector theorem, if a point on a bisector of an angle, then the point is equidistant from the side of the angle. So meaning if AD, this the, it is a bisector, if it bisect the angle BAC, this orange one here, we know that these two angles are going to be congruent. And we know that AB, that side of an angle and this side here makes 90 degree angle right here. Okay. And likewise that uh, AC is perpendicular to CD, so they both 90. Then we can say that this side here are congruent. We can say that BD is congruent to CD. Okay. It's same thing as the converse. It's just like reverse, you know. Here, if a point of the uh, interior of an angle and equidistance from the side of an angle, then the point is on the bisector. Means, say, if this measures 90 degree and the segment that connects to the bisector are congruent, so therefore we can say that it's on the angle bisector, okay? So therefore that we can say that AD bisects angle BAC, okay? That's the converse. Let's go for some example here. So we know that these two here are congruent. We have a triangle ABC, find AD, and I can see that these two here are congruent, and this measures 90 degree. So therefore, I can say that these two sides here that AD is equal to CD, so therefore 13x minus 4 is equal to 8x plus 11. <clears throat> minus 8x minus 8x plus 4 plus 4. That will give me 5x is equal to 15, so therefore x is equal to 3. Since I'm looking for AD, I'm going to plug in the 3 right there. So 13 times 3 minus 4 will give me 39 minus 4, which is going to be 35. So therefore, AD is equal to 35. If AD is 35 here, therefore, CD is also 35. And find the measurement of FGH. FGH. Okay, so we know that these two here are equal, and that measures 90, right? So we know that this is a perpendicular by, uh, angle bisector. If this angle bisector, so we know that this one here are equal, okay? So if they're equal, we can say now that this angle here has to be congruent because they are opposite to a side that are congruent. So we can say that 2x plus 20 is equal to 5x minus 37. Minus 2x on both sides, minus 2x on both sides. That will give us 3x. Add 37 here, add 37 here. That will give you 57. Divide everything here by 3. The answer is x equal to 29. So if x 29, we're looking for the measurement of FGH, FGH. So I'm going to use that angle there, 2 times 29 
plus 20, which 2 times 29 will be, plus 2 times 29 is 58, plus 20 will be 78. So the measurement of FGH is 78. Follow-up question, if this is 78, how much is this angle here? Remember, this is a triangle here. They sum it to 180. So if I ask you how much is this angle here, you're going to subtract it from 180. So 180 minus 78 minus 90 because we have a 90 over here. So we can say that this is 12 and this is also 12. Okay. And that's how you apply perpendicular uh, bisector and angle bisector theorem. So as always, kaboom.